This is columns part three. Back in parts one and two, we had the Euler equation, which told us that the force at which a column will buckle is N. That's a factor that is determined by how the column is supported on the ends. N can be 4, 2, 1, or 0.25, depending on whether it's fixed at both ends, fixed, pin, 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 or just free. Okay, and we also had this equation. That's another way of saying the same thing. A different author provided this equation. That's why I used the letter K underneath here instead of N up above, and the K gets squared. So whenever N is 4, K is 0.5. Whenever N is 2, K is the square root of 2 over 2. We call it 0.7. Of course, when N is 1, K is 1, and when N is 0.25, K is 2. And we also had this equation, which told us that the stress, which is sort of like the force, stress is force per unit area. So the stress in this column would be pi squared times the modulus of elasticity divided by KL over R, all that in parentheses squared, this K being the same as this K, a factor that consider that takes into effect the end conditions of the column, how the column is supported on the ends. That L is length, just like that L was, but this lowercase r, this is radius of gyration. And we had this equation, except the author of this one used the letter K for radius of gyration. He said the radius of gyration is square root of the moment of inertia divided by the area. Now we're going to show how these formulas are related to each other. So, okay. So that was one of them, that was the other one, and that was another one. Okay. So let's just, well this is force, see, force equals that. This is stress, this is force per unit area. So let's take our force equation and divide it by area, and we turn it into stress by doing that, because force per unit area is stress. So we take this, pi squared EI over KL squared, which is right there, and we just stick area underneath it. This is force. This is force per unit area. This is force, this is stress, and this is stress. So that is equal to that. And, well, we have KL divided by R in parentheses. That's in our denominator. And all that's squared, so that is actually K squared. K squared times L squared divided by R squared. So whenever you have something on the bottom that's divided by something else, you can take that something else and just throw it right on the top. And that's what we did here. We took our R squared and put it up there. So we still have our pi squared, our, mod yeah, our elastic modulus, Young's modulus. We took our R squared and threw it on top. And we still have our KL squared. Okay, and that's equal to this. We didn't change it a bit, bringing it down here. Now we see that both sides of the equation have pi squared, the modulus of elasticity, and KL squared. So we can go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by pi squared, modulus of elasticity over KL squared, and we're left with just that R squared equals moment of inertia divided by area. And we take the square root of each side of this equation and we have our radius of gyration equals the square root of the moment of inertia divided by the area. Notice this author uses lowercase r for radius of gyration. We used k a while ago. Too bad we don't have enough letters to represent all these concepts. So regardless of which letter is used to denote radius of gyration, whether it's lowercase r or k, just remember that the area radius of gyration is equal to the square root of the area moment of inertia divided by the area, the cross-sectional area of the column.
Okay, Euler's equation tells us that a strong column, okay, tells a strong column is characterized by a large modulus of elasticity, that letter E, the bigger that is, the bigger that is, the more force it'll take. Okay. Okay, a short column length, L, the less that is, the more that is. And a large area radius of gyration. The greater the radius of gyration, the stronger the column's going to be. And any column, unless it's round, it's going to have two different, I guess you'd say, radii of gyration. One about the x-axis, one about the y-axis. That's how high beams do. Obviously, Euler's equation is inaccurate when it tells you that a column can withstand more than the material's compressive stress. You put in real small numbers for length of a column here. Put them in small enough, and this equation will tell you that the column will just about support the weight of the world. It's And Euler's equation told me that this tail boom here, remember this one from part one? Euler's equation told me that, that tail boom was 2.6 times stronger than it really was. So you're probably wondering, well, why are you wasting our time telling us about Euler's equation if it's worthless? Well, it's not totally worthless. Matter of fact, it's very valuable because there's another website here that gives us this equation, and it makes use of the Euler equation. That's what that little FE is there. This isn't chemistry class. That's not iron. It's Euler's stress, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, anyway, this website. This equation was found at the website asakaf, A-S-S-A-K-K-A-F dot com forward slash courses forward slash E-N-C-E three five five forward slash lectures forward slash part two forward slash chapter 5 D is in Delta dot PDF okay that's where I found this formula and this guy uses some letters it takes some getting used to you might as well get used to that when you're researching this stuff amongst different websites and different authors. They use all kinds of different letters. Okay, he starts out with this P sub N equals A sub G times F sub CR. Okay, P N is a load that a column can withstand. Maybe the P stands for pounds, I don't know. Um, FCR is the critical or buckling stress. It's not critical or buckling force. It's critical or buckling stress. Now, why he used the letter F for stress, I don't know. And this AG, he never defines it in the 21 pages of this section. But it's obviously cross-sectional area of the column. He then throws in a design strength factor this phi sub c of 0.85 okay Let me write that down oops there we go and You'll notice that he calls it phi sub c here, but off to the side he wrote just plain old phi without the little c subscript. So, just have to scratch your head on some of this stuff. Okay, but now he redeems himself with a very valuable equation, this one. Okay.
okay? It says FCR, that one there, is equal to that to the that power. Well, that lambda sub C squared goes, it's all raised to that power here if lambda, lambda sub C is less than one and a half, but it's stuck underneath a different number if lambda sub C squared is greater than a half. And if you want to do this on your calculator, if you set lambda sub c equal to one and a half, well, you get the same number here, 0.658 to the one and a half squared, which would be 2.25, I think, equals 0.877 divided by 2.25. Okay. He defines this lambda sub c as the square root of Fy over Fe. Okay, Fy is the yield strength of materials, typically 36,000 pounds per square inch. Sometimes it's 50,000 pounds per square inch. I use the 36,000 in mine. Okay, and Fe, that is the Euler buckling stress. It's not force. You know, he used the word, the letter F, to talk about stress, not force. So that Fe, it wasn't, it wasn't this F, that was force, it was this sigma. Sigma is a letter that another author at another website used a while ago to talk about buckling stress. So anyway, that, pi squared times the uh, modulus of elasticity over KL over R, all in parentheses squared, is what this FE is.